Well, firstly, just want to say congratulations on, on the film and obviously winning the jury prize at Cannes. That was a wonderful achievement, very much deserved. But um, were you at all, not to take anything away from the film, but surprised to win that award? Because you don't often see sort of comedies sort of rewarded in at Cannes Film Festival. Um, well, I, I don't know. I mean, we, we were surprised. I mean, we didn't expect anything because to be chosen for the festival is a, is a prize in itself um, because that's, you know, it's the whole of world cinema for the year. So... It, no, that was hugely. Um, it was very nice, um, but to be chosen was um, was fantastic. Uh, to to win the prize was fantastic. And I mean, obviously, the pair of you have worked together sort of quite a few times now. What do you think it is about the the two of you that sort of just click so well, and and how your <laughs> works sort of complement each other so well? Damn thing, really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we often say it's just the football, really. Yeah. Then the film comes after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I suppose we get kind of excited and curious and, and furious about s similar things that are kind of naturally there. It's nothing that's forced. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to stand each other for such a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, and one project bleeds into another. So we, we don't reflect too much upon it. Best not, I think. And, and Ken, once again, you've managed to sort of mm. find this wonderful um, mm. middle ground between capturing sort of, sort of gritty social realism, but making it quite mm. light-hearted and very accessible to, to an audience. Mm. Is that quite a difficult thing to achieve, to, to portray quite a strong message and make it sort of quite good-humoured and jovial? Well, it's all in the script. I mean, it's all in what Paul writes. Um, and the script describes this group of uh, kids, and in describing them... Um, in their interaction, I mean, they're very funny because that's the way kids are, and the, in the language, in the slang, in the way they wind each other up, um, in the, in the struggles they go through, and they make you smile. Um, so it's absolutely implicit, you know. They're, they're not. It's not separate. The, the, the seriousness of their situation mm. and the comedy of their behaviour is are part mm. of the same, and it's. It's it's inter one is integral to the other. So because I mean, this story could quite easily have been written with a you know a darker tone and more of a tragedy, uh, and we have done that in other films. My name is Joe in Sweet Sixteen, in particular. But um, another thing that kind of touched us as well when we you talk to a lot of these kids doing community payback or youth clubs just now. There's I mean there's this kind of life force and wit and fun and mischief and energy. And uh, we wanted to, to reflect that, you know, because, you know, with that too goes tremendous frustration and anger about their future because they've simply just been written off. I mean, it's an absolute tragedy. I and mean, you speak to them, you know, and, uh, and the frustration they have, you know, of just wanting to do something, have a project. And uh, many of them never get a chance to work in a film. It's just, you see them come alive. I mean, look at Paul Brannigan just now, and I'm only saying this because Paul's talked about it himself. I mean, Paul is, is bristling with intelligence and wit and fun. And then, and he just, he wasn't going to get a job. He just wasn't going to get a job. He's even not back by the army. Um, so when you see people like that, of that talent, who can now hold a film and, and you multiply that literally by millions, I mean, you just realise what a waste of talent. All these bright people out there, you know, who are determined to live life to their full. I mean, it's a waste of their potential and uh, just a waste of their lives. You know, and so it's a terrible mm -hmm. tragedy and we have to examine this system mm -hmm. which allows mm -hmm. that and fosters that. Mm -hmm. And that really was the starting point mm -hmm. for wanting to make this film. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not an act of God, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a man-made economic system mm -hmm. that, um, that you can change. Mm -hmm. But of course it's in the interest of the rich and the powerful not to change it. And that's, that's, that's the battle. Mm. So was Paul's own, because he's got quite sort of, obviously a turbulent history himself, did that play a part in, in the casting of him? Because obviously in the film he's a character that needs mm. to be given a chance and you both mm. sort of have given him that chance. Um, well, um, I mean, what you try, doesn't I mean there's many other people who have, you know, have similar backgrounds as well. You have to find someone, essentially, who can give flesh and blood and make you believe that the real characters up there on screen, and that's very particular. And just Paul has, you know, a steadiness about him. He's got a look about him. He's got a timing about him. And um, so that, that, that's why, uh, why Ken cast him. And just finally, mm. um, obviously one of the, the, the key films, uh, themes in the film is obviously whiskey as well. Were, mm. uh, were either of you sort of particularly clued up on that before? Did you have to do quite a lot of research into that? Mm. Well, I had affection <laughs> for whiskey uh, <laughs> because of my brother-in-law, who's a who's a great amateur, I suppose. But the lovely thing about whiskey, it's got lots of different levels to it, really. There's the craftsmanship, you know, genuinely, people who appreciate it and love it and who make it. Scotland's national drink and it's promoted as, 
you know, there's a big stereotype about that. Many of the young people who live in Scotland, you know, like the kids in the community, like they've never tasted whisky. You know, they've never been to pl these beautiful places in the countryside. Uh, you know, you know, made and distilled. And right on top of that, of course, is the pretension. You know, these rich people who spend fortunes up to a hundred thousand for a bottle, which is almost ridiculous to demonstrate their wealth. So, so there's tremendous vulgarity there. So there's lots of levels that that really helped us in the storytelling. Really. Because I've now since seen the film, yeah. I've, I've been ordering a couple of whiskies since <laughs> when I've been out. Have you felt more inclined to have a whiskey yourself? Because it really yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. you want, want yes, a whiskey. Yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yes, I, I have, uh, I've nosed a few whiskies. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's lovely to compare notes with someone, you know. Mm -hmm. Try a Talisker or a Lagavulin. Even the names are beautiful. I love the names, you mm -hmm. know, Bunahavan. Yeah, there's, there's, there's joy in it, you know, and, uh, and they are very, very distant. And the, and the more you actually practice, you can actually smell all the differences and, and you notice that Charlie McLean, who was in the film, you know, taught us about, you know, the palate and the different parts of the tongue and how it touches it. So there's, there's a, it's, a, it's another adventure for people who are interested in that. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your thank time. You.